It's good to be back in Hiroshima. First of all, I would like to, to thank Prime Minister Kishida for hosting us. I visited the Peace Memorial this time last year, and I was moved by the tragic story of a survivor who told me how she escaped the terror. It's no coincidence we are here today in Hiroshima, where an immense tragedy took place almost 80 years ago. It reminds us what we, as G7, are defending and why we are defending it. Peace and freedom, because it's what all human beings want most. We are a union of values and we will defend these values. And that's why we are standing with the people of Ukraine. The Kremlin continues to fend the flames of war across Ukraine. In the EU, we are working hard to get Ukraine what they need, more weapons, more ammunition, and faster. This will be crucial to its counteroffensive. We have stood by the people of Ukraine since day one with solidarity and resolve, and we will keep it up for as long as it takes. We will reaffirm our support for Ukraine's effort towards lasting peace, our EU support for Zelensky's peace formula. Any credible peace plan must be anchored in the principles of UN Charter, territorial sovereignty, and territorial integrity. One thing is clear, it's only up to Ukraine to decide when to consider negotiations. Here in Hiroshima, we again clearly state that Russia's rhetoric is unacceptable and irresponsible, especially Russia's nuclear rhetoric. And we call out Russia's reckless actions around the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which deliberately risks the safety of an entire continent. The EU also gives great importance to nuclear disarmament, non-proliferation, and arms control. We reaffirm here in Hiroshima our full support for the treaty on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. We will continue to back Ukraine with strong military, political, humanitarian, and financial support. The EU and its member states have already provided over 70 billion euros in assistance to Ukraine. The EU has also taken sweeping action to curb Russia's military action. We are now focused on shutting the door on loopholes and, continue to, and continuing to cut Russia off from critical supplies. We will restrict trade in Russian diamonds. Russian diamonds are not forever. And we will lay out openly and frankly why these sanctions are necessary and justified. Russian propaganda is built on lies and conspiracy. We are fighting back with the facts and figures. The EU is also building strong partnerships around the world. Only last year, we spent 90 billion euros on global development assistance, and this makes the EU, this makes the EU and its member states by far the largest provider of development support. We are also engaging with partners to forge mutually beneficial partnerships Many developing countries have moved into acute indebtedness. Multilateral development banks have a key role to play, not only in the classical areas of development and poverty relief. It's essential that they can mobilize private capital, in particular support of a wider range of countries in tackling both the climate and digital transition. The G20 presidency's work to reform these multilateral development banks is extremely important. They need to do better and they need to do more. Ladies and gentlemen, trade, open trade, is the European DNA. That's why we are working to build an open, rules-based multilateral trading system. And it's time to back the reforms of Director General Giozzi and make the WTO fit for purpose and able to resolve trade disputes, our goal must be to ensure a global level playing field. Trade policy plays a key role in advancing our partners' green and digital transitions, human rights, and labor conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, a stable and constructive relation with China 
is in our mutual interest. The EU is firm on our values. We will keep those in our concerns on human rights, whether it is in Hong Kong, in Xinjiang, or in Tibet. We will not tolerate interferences in our countries that would undermine our democratic societies, and we will promote our interests. We have an interest in stable economic relations. We don't want to decouple, but the risk to reduce over dependencies and diversify to address unfair practices. We balance our trade relationship is what we must do and create a true level playing field for our companies and for our workers. We also need to engage together with China on global challenges, climate change, conservation of natural resources, biodiversity, debt sustainability. Given, given its role in the international community and the size of its economy, China has a special responsibility in the world. It has to play by international rules, and we call on China to press Russia to stop its military aggression. On Taiwan, we maintain our one China policy, no unilateral change of the status quo. Finally, we need to build a global system where power is shared more fairly, and we need to do it together. Reform of the United Nations and the World Trade Organization would be steps in the right direction. And we also have a common responsibility to ensure that the multilateral system can deliver. I have long advocated for African Union membership in the G20, so I am extremely pleased to see we succeeded to put it in our draft declaration. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like again to thank you dear people of Japan, dear Prime Minister of Kishida, for your warm welcome here in Hiroshima. Europe and Japan share a strong bond, the painful memory of the death and destruction of world wars. And that's why we are so determined to make sure this never happens again. And that's why the EU and G7 will defend the fundamental principles of the UN Charter for greater peace and for greater prosperity. I thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you for, your, for your opening remarks and, uh, and for the speech. Um, I wanted to um, ask you a question about, like, can you try to elaborate about like, why the sanctions which G7 nations may try to agree uh, on Russia during, during, this, during this summit. So um, do you expect G7 to raise tightening of sanctions uh, on Russia with uh, non-G7 members such as India, and the, those prime ministers will be also attending here, uh, here a meeting and summit. Thank you. Yeah, you, you know that you have decided to put in place a, a very tough regime of sanctions in order to be painful against Russia and to, uh, and to stop the Russia's war machine. And uh, since day one, we have worked very closely with our partners, especially uh, in the G7 meeting. And it's good that we'll have the occasion also to meet uh, other countries uh, which are not members of the G7, and we have the occasion to talk again with them in order to, to explain what are the reasons. And the reasons, this is the war launched by Russia against Ukraine. And that's why it is so uh, important to uh, explain and to convince if we want to defend the multilateral rules-based order, we need to be serious. We, we need to be firm. We need to be, to be clear. This is uh, not possible to make a compromise on such an important topic. Uh, and for instance, you, you, you know that uh, we are also extremely committed on the EU side in order to, to support the effort especially in the global south for more sustainable development. We are by far, I would like to repeat it, the first sponsor in terms of uh, uh, development uh, aid, development assistance to that part of the, of the world. And, and I think that uh, it's really important to have an open, a frank debate on that question. It will not be the first time uh, since the start of this full-scale invasion against uh, Ukraine. Many times we had the occasion to engage in a bilateral way or in multilateral fora with those uh, countries and to try to convince them that it's very important to be very tough, to be very firm, and to make clear that uh, what Russia is doing is not acceptable because it is a clear and a blatant violation of uh, the multilateral order. Thank you. Ansgar, yes, from DPA. Ansgar, the German press agency, DPA. Um, President Michel, uh, can you confirm that the Biden administration has signaled to European allies 
allies uh, that the United States would allow them to export um, F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. And a second question on sanctions and diamonds. Um, has the Belgium government uh, signaled to you that it would agree on an import ban on Russian diamonds? Thank you. Well, there are two, two elements. First element, the military support for, for Ukraine, and on a regular basis, this is not a secret for you, uh, we, we, we are in close coordination with our partners, with our allies, in order to have a common approach in terms of military support for Ukraine. Today, we have the occasion uh, to discuss this topic, uh, together with Joe Biden and the other members of uh, uh, the, G, the G20, and we'll assess uh, what's the, 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 the level of the additional support that will be needed. It's very clear that Ukraine needs more, more military equipment. That's that's why on the EU side we have decided to put in place uh, a system in order to, to, to increase the level of production of ammunition and we need to speed up our efforts. And in terms of fighter jets, you have seen probably uh, that some countries have announced a coalition in order to start training uh, for, for pilots. Well, this was a topic uh, today uh, with, uh, with the United States and with the, other, with the other partners. In terms of sanctions in the field of diamonds, I don't intend to speak on behalf uh, of the, the, the Belgian government, you can imagine, but there are two debates. On the one hand, we have the debate here in the, G, in the G7, and you know that in parallel there is a, a debate for an 11th package of sanctions uh, on, the, on the EU side, and we will make sure that there is a, a coherent approach, the G7 on the one hand, and uh, what you are doing uh, at the EU level on, on the other hand. Catherine from, uh, from IRD. Yes, you had a question. Uh, I said. <laughs> um, so it's uh, a little bit the same uh, question on diamonds. How sure is it that an embargo about diamonds exports will be part of the final uh, communique, especially from Brazil, for example? Yeah, but uh, here we, we start, we'll start the, the, the meetings today, uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, prepared the, the statement, but only at the end of the meeting. We, you will know, and we will know, uh, what will be the final version of the, of, of the statement. But I'm confident that uh, the, the double approach uh, is to, to, to restrict uh, trade on Russian uh, diamonds. This is uh, what we are uh, working on together with the, with the partners. And uh, again, this is good on all those topics not only the field of diamonds, but also on the other topics, that we will meet uh, other important countries uh, uh, in order to have a very good, I hope, dialogue with them, in order to, to explain why we are absolutely convinced it's needed to target Russia with our sanctions, because what Russia is doing is extremely dangerous, not only for the security on the European continent, it's dangerous for the world, because it's a dangerous precedent. It gives the impression that it's possible for, for a big country to invade uh, a neighbor without any this is not acceptable, and that's why uh, I'm absolutely convinced that uh, we were right to take Russia by surprise, because we were and we have been extremely united on the EU side, but also together with our like-minded partners across the world. Vincent, from RFI. Bonjour. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Vous dites qu'il y a débat ici au G7 sur les diamants y compris aussi dans l'Union européenne, est-ce que vous pensez qu'il est possible de parvenir à un consensus sur ce thème précis dans l'Union sur les diamants russes I have the impression it is very important to work on the traceability, and it's what we, we, we need to do you know, to put, in, to put a, a system in place uh, that will be, that will be uh, efficient, because we all know that uh, the challenge is to make sure with our sanctions that uh, we are painful against Russia, not against ourselves. This is uh, systematically uh, the same the principle uh, that uh, we, are, we, we have tried to put in place, being painful against Russia in, in order to curb, to curb Russia's war machine, uh, not to be painful full uh, on, on ourselves, and that's why it requires a certain level of expertise, and that's why I'm telling you that on the one hand there is this debate at the level of the G7, and I have the impression this debate will have an influence on how we are acting on the EU side. And you remember that uh, this is uh, the, the 11th package of sanctions that you are currently discussing on the EU side. And we, you remember that for all uh, the 10 previous packages, systematically, we have coordinated with our partners, with our like-minded partners. And this is the right approach in order to make sure that you have a current uh, approach uh, in terms of sanctions against Russia. 
Thank you. Daniel Prosler, the Deutsche Zeitung. I'd like to ask you about uh, European unity on uh, the question of how to move on with the sanctions. If I understand the German Chancellor correctly, he's talking about closing loopholes now, now but not uh, moving forward to a new level of sanctions. Uh, so would you say there is a controversial debate among Europeans how to move on now? This is a very interesting question because uh, for each package of sanctions, since package number one, uh, we faced exactly uh, the same question. So, uh, systematically, there were doubts on the possibility to stick together and to be united. And you can observe, together with me, that, uh, that uh, the, 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 the recent 14 or 15 months, we succeeded systematically to stick together and to agree uh, on 10 packages of sanctions. And it's very clear that uh, each package is more difficult than the previous one because each package, uh, each additional package, uh, I, I mean, uh, requires more political efforts uh, to, 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 to make a decision. Uh, and it is absolutely logical. Uh, then the more we are taking and making sanctions against Russia, the more it is important in parallel to, to work on the loopholes and to, and to try to avoid uh, the circumvention of sanctions. That's why we've also decided to appoint a representative uh, dedicated to the, this task, to engage uh, with uh, third countries in order to have a, a transparent dialogue with, with third countries and to make sure that uh, we maximize the effects and the impact of our, um, our sanctions. But I can confirm to you that uh, in the European Council, the, the global approach is indeed to focus much more on uh, the fight against uh, the loopholes and the certain interventions of sanctions. Marie Lisa, you had a question as well. Uh, Magdalena is going to give you a microphone. Hello, Mr. President. Salah Reza, I'm happy from Iran International TV. U.S. official considers Iran the top military backer of Russia. Iran and Russia are expanding military ties and IRGC is in the front, uh, forefront of these expansions. Why EU is refraining from take, uh, taking action against the IRGC while there have been calls to list IRGC as a terrorist organization, even the European Parliament voted by a large majority to list the IRGC? Thank you. We have a very clear position, and we, we, we are doing everything to convince all the countries in the world not to support, uh, not to support uh, uh, Russia, and, and, and we are using all the tools we have in our possession in order to, to make sure that uh, uh, a, a large majority of, of, of countries across the world are supporting our approach and are not supporting Russia with military uh, tools. Uh, there are ties between Russia and Iran. It's not a secret uh, for all of us, but we intend to maximize our diplomatic efforts and to use the different leverage we, we have in order to convince Iran not to take uh, wrong decisions with regard uh, with uh, this uh, possible support for, for Russia. Yes. One more question from the Japanese media. Uh, President Michel, uh, I'm a reporter for Shanghai Media Group. We were aware that the EU had paid attention to Japan's plan to release uh, Fukushima's nuclear waste into the ocean. So can I ask if the G7 leaders will be discussing this issue in the coming days? Thanks. Uh, I'm, uh I, I, I'm not certain it will be a, a topic discussed at the level of the, of the leader, but this is very uh, clear uh, that we will have uh, uh, good discussions on uh, uh, respect for biodiversity, on uh, the environmental uh, topics, but I'm not certain this specific topic will be uh, on, on the agenda of our leaders' meetings in the, in the next days. Okay. Thank you very much, President. Thank you for joining us at this press conference ahead of the G7. We'll keep you informed. See you soon. Bye.